Friday morning, and it's a blessing to be here, coming to the end of the week, a wonderful week it's been, and um, I want to thank you all for supporting us, whether you're at line at home, watching in your bed, watching on your way to work, in your car, you're in a chalet or you're here, it's honestly a blessing and it's wonderful to see you and for you to be with us here this morning. We're going to start with our theme song, hymn number 501, Tis the Blessed Hour of Prayer. Put some music in my ears. It's the blessed hour of prayer. Tis the blessed hour of prayer. When our hearts, when our hearts slowly pray. And we gather to Jesus. As we gather to Jesus, our Savior. So if we come to him in faith, if we come to him in faith, his protection, his protection. So what a bar for Some parts. It's a blessed hour of prayer. Blessed hour of prayer. What a bomb. What a bomb for the Oh, sweet. Go to verse 2. Tis the blessed hour of prayer. Tis the blessed. Tis the blessed hour. When the Savior draws near. When the Savior draws near. With a tender. With a tender compassion, his children. See when he tells when he tells us, when he tells us we at his feet every care. At his feet every what a bar for for the weary. Oh how sweet to the chorus and bless it our prayer, bless it our prayer. Bless it our what a bar for Oh, how sweet. Oh, how sweet. It's verse 3. You know this one. It's the blessed hour of prayer. When the tempted and when the tried. To the Savior who loves them. Their sorrows. With a sympathizing heart, he will remove all your cares this morning. He will remove. Say what a bomb for the weary. What a bomb for the weary. Oh how sweet. Oh how sweet. Get to the chorus. Blessed our prayer. Blessed our prayer. Say what a bomb. Last verse, sing with us now. Just the blessed hour of prayer. It's the blessed hour of prayer. Just the blessed hour of prayer. Trusting Him we need. That the blessings we're needing. That the blessings we will surely receive them. We will surely receive In the fullness of His trust. In the fullness of His trust. We will lose all of our cares. We shall lose every Say what a bomb for. The blessed hour of prayer, blessed hour of prayer. Blessed hour of prayer. Listen to the course again. What a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet. Blessed hour, listen to the course. Blessed hour of prayer. Blessed hour of prayer. Say, what a bomb. morning good morning good morning good morning how 
was happy when they called me. Let's come and worship the Lord. Today is the day five of Come Meeting 2022. Haven't we been blessed? I have been touched morning and evening. Especially the time that we spend together praying on one-to-one. -one. And today we are going to be blessed. But I would like us to welcome each and every one in a very special way. Just turn to those that are sitting by you and say hi. And for those online, we want to welcome you that you open your heart for the Holy Spirit today to fill you with gladness. I would like to open by open my Bible to Psalm 19. Psalm 19 verse 14. Psalm 19 verse 14. It reads, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock, my redeemer. You see, in order to be acceptable in the Lord, in the sight of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, your meditation of your heart must be in harmony with your words before your confession will be accepted. May God, our Lord, be here with us. Open your heart as I call God to be in our midst. Let's pray. King of kings, you are holy. You are holy. Father, only you are holy. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. Father, we invite you. We invite you in our midst. Come and sit at your throne. And be the seat of our affection. And reach out to our hearts. Father, we have come just as we are. Because your hands welcomes each and every one. Those in the sanctuary and those at home. King of kings, I pray that you unleash your angels to fill this sanctuary. May your glory and your kind of power fill this place. Father, any spirit, any spirit, any power that is not from you, we dispel it by the power of your spirit. Father, we have come with our brokenness. We have come with our joy and thanksgiving. We have come with our offering. We have come with our sacrifices. May you, O oh Lord, bless it and make it a holy sacrifice. This morning, we are contending with the sick. We are contending with the issues of life, with fear. We are contending that you, Lord, will turn our life around and feed us with your spirit. Father, we pray that you will turn our water into wine. Holy Spirit of God, may you arrest here and speak. Father, one request I pray. May you reposition each and every one of us that we and our conference will be so winners that through our ministry, through our lives, many shall be saved. We want to thank you to bless every aspect of our worship today. In Jesus' name, amen. So for our praise and worship, the theme we'll be doing is trying to really arise and arouse you this morning to make sure that you're hitting the day correctly. So we're going to sing two praise songs um, this morning. The first one we're going to sing is soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the king. David, if you can come and lead the song for us, please. Anyone believe that Jesus is coming very soon? Just wave your hand. Anyone believe that Jesus is coming soon? Do you believe Jesus is coming soon? I just wanna, I wanna start with a little Bible text. Um, in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 37 it says, For soon and very soon, the one who is appearing will come without delay. And it just talks about Jesus coming very soon. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon, 
very soon. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going One more time to see the King. Soon and very soon. Say. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon. soon and very soon. No more dying there, what? No more dying there. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there. No more dying there. I can't there. hear you. I can't hear you. We are going A bit louder for me. No more dying there. No more dying there. We are going. We are going to see Hallelujah. The hallelujah. 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 We're going just, to see just the, the people in the audience. No more dying there. Lovely, lovely, no more dying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to No see more crying the there next to us. No more crying there. We are going to see the peace. No more crying there. No more crying there. David. Let's go straight to it. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises and I am so glad that you're in my life. I know you know this song. Let's wake up this morning with Lord, I lift your name on high. Say, I'm so glad you came to save us. 
save us. Oh, so hear that again. Say, Lord, I live. Say, say, Lord, I lift your name on high. Say, Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Say, I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. Say, I'm, you dig up, dig up. I'm so glad you came to say, say, Lord, say, Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Say, I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so yeah. glad you're in so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Say you came. Say you came. You came from heaven Woo! to us. To show the way. From the earth to us. Say you came. Say you came. To show the way. From the earth to the cross. My death to pay. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the Say Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. We just did the chorus again. Say you came. Uh, say you came, say you came, say you came. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the from earth, the earth uh, to, to the cross, my death. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Say, Lord, I lift your name on high. Listen to the chorus, guys. Listen to the chorus. Listen to the chorus. Say you came, say you came, you came. You came from heaven to earth. Give me some action. From the earth to the, earth to the cross. To say my debt to pay. From the grave. Let's repeat the last one. Lord, I lift your name on. Say, Lord, I lift your name on. Lord, I lift your name on. Say, Lord, I lift your name on high. I'm definitely awake. Say, Lord, lift your name on high. Give me a vibe. Say, Lord, I lift your name on high. Say, Lord, I lift. 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 Say, Lord, lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Welcome, welcome once again for those that have just joined us. And we welcome those online who have just tuned in. Whether you are driving, you are at work, or you are lousily in your base. May the Lord bless you. Haven't we been blessed? We thank the young people for their music. I wish I can sing. I would have joined them, but I know I'm disqualified. My name is Seth. I'm the one hosting for this morning worship. I would like to welcome the man of God. The man the Lord have chosen to speak to me and you. I have been spoken. I have had my Damascus this come meeting. Maybe you, it's your turn today. I'm going to invite Pastor Juan to come, but before he comes, let's bow as we pray. And as I'm praying, pray for him that God will speak to you, God will speak to me, and God will speak to every one of us. Let's pray. King Jesus, we invite you again to speak to us. We thank you for your man servant you have elected to be your spokesman, to speak the word of courage, the word of peace, the word of grace, the word of mercy, the word of forgiveness. We thank you that your spirit will fill our heart and our mind and remove every distraction, power, or spirit from us that we may in tune our ears to your word. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bless your man's servant with the spirit of boldness, with the spirit of power and grace to speak your word in simplicity and boldness so that your children will hear. May this words 
be the turning point of our lives. Father, we want to be saved. We want to be at peace with you. We want to walk in your righteousness. We want to be filled at your feet. So give us a listening ears. And may we translate these words into life as we behold you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, precious saints. How are you doing? Good. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Early um, is a challenge and you have come out. And um, we are happy to see you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And that he may speak to your heart this morning, transform you, encourage you, and to tell you that there is hope, love, and mercy for you. Amen. For those that are also uh, at home or internet or listening, May the Lord bless you too. It is our prayer that he will speak to all of us today. One of the greatest privileges of walking with the Lord is hearing his voice. I think that there is nothing more amazing, powerful, transforming than to listening to the voice of the Lord. And it only takes two. The only thing that you have to do in order for the Lord to speak to you is to say, yes, Lord, I want you to speak to me. Speak that your servant is hearing. This is, this is it. The Bible is packed with promises uh, that says that he wants to speak with you. That he is anxious to speak with you. That he wants to be your friend. And when God wants to speak to you, it's not to threaten you. Oh, okay, the necktie. Thank you. I wanted to start a new theme, but okay. <laughs> Maybe somebody will say, hey, I like that style. All the deacons next Sabbath, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. This is the good thing of being in a family, of the, in the family of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I need help <laughs> and prayers. <laughs> And counseling, serious counseling. <laughs> Amen. We were saying that the Bible is packed with promises and images of the Lord chasing after you, running after you, begging you to please have a conversation with him. Can you imagine something like that? The Most High doesn't want to pass you by. Wherever you are, he wants to, he's just looking, hey, how are you doing? He wants to speak to you. He wants to listen to you. He wants you to speak to him. He has a lot of things to tell you, a lot of good things. And the good thing about this is that he says, I have plans for you, and they are not plans to harm you, but to bless you and to give you more than you can ever ask or imagine. We have a lot of examples uh, of this. I remember I was in a church, and probably this person is seeing now, so may the Lord bless you. Uh, we spoke already before I shared this, this, this illustration. And this person had a lot of uh, visions of the Lord. A lot of visions of the Lord. And, um, but these visions in the night, they were dreams, they were beasts. It was, the church was on fire. I was being chased by you know, murderous rabbits, and it was a mess. Every Sabbath, this person will get up to give a testimony, and we knew what was happening. It was the book of Revelation mixed with the book of Daniel with other apocryphal books there. Until one day, until one day, I decided to come to my sister and said, Sister, what do you eat before you go to sleep? <laughs> That was the only question that came to my mind. And she said, of course, what everybody does, you know. I have plantains and cassava and sweet potatoes with pizza and, and rice and beans, you know. I said, ah, I think we have discovered the secret, the source of the, of the visions. I don't think this is the power of the Lord that is speaking through you. I think this is the power of indigestion that is talking through you. I mean, I don't blame her if after eating all of that, of course you're going to see all the beasts of Revelation and Daniel together singing Kumbaya, everybody like this. Of course you will. We changed that diet, and after that, the dreams were more peaceful. <laughs> 
the testimonies came. I had a good night last night, and it was good to sleep, you know. So, yeah, not everything. I'm not saying that everything is we have to test the spirits. Amen. Now, if you're having a recurrent dream, what the Bible says is, you, you wait, you pray to the Lord. Is it you that is talking to me? Give me wisdom and let me see. And wait on the Lord. We have several examples like that. But the Bible is packed with verses that says that he wants to speak to you. And there are thousands of ways in which he will speak to you. Therefore, don't limit him. When you talk to him and tell him to talk to you, do like Habakkuk. Habakkuk said, I will speak and ask and I will wait and watch. So you pray to the Lord and then wait on him, ask him to open your eyes and to, in order to distinguish his voice. Amen? But let him speak however he wants to speak because he has thousands of ways in which he will talk to you. Look how he insists now here to speak. He says, oh, I have it right here. The Lord says, I was ready to respond, but no one asked for help. I was ready to be found but no one was looking for me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that didn't want to call on my name. Imagine the Lord just saying, hey, he, like waving and asking you to speak with him. This is amazing. This is another one that we know. If anyone wants to know the will of God, he or she will know. That's the point that is being made there, whether my doctrine is from God or not. If you want to know God's will for your life, the best thing to do is to ask God. Amen? Yes. He wants to speak to you. Another one says, whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Um, I remember one night after uh, a day of visitations and work, I was going back home, and before coming up, coming out of the house, I, I have my bag. I said, maybe I will just go, and uh, after visiting, I will just go and maybe run a little bit, and I got my bag. When I took my bag, I felt something in me telling me, take the big towel. Now, the big towel is exactly that, a big towel, and that is not a towel I will take to a gym or to a track or to a swimming pool because I don't want people to think that I'm moving in there, you know. I want them to know that after I had run, I am going back home. And so I take a little one. But don't, and that day I felt that impression in my heart telling me, take the big one. So I did. I took it. I folded there. The day was over. It was 9.30 in the night. Went to the train station, waiting for the bus, uh, for the train. And the gentleman told me, it has been canceled. But wait, don't worry. There will be one in five minutes. I, you know, it, anyway, the distance between home and the train station is about 30 minutes, and it's a very pleasant view. It's okay, and I like to walk and, you know, be thinking. So, but I said, you know what? It has been a long day, so let me wait. So I waited. Next train was canceled too. Yeah? And so he told me, well, the next one was canceled, but let's wait for the next one. I said, well, let me wait for the next one too. So we waited for the next one, and guess what? The next one was also, it was canceled too. So I was there, and as I was standing there, I said in my heart, I said, you know what, Lord, let's go and let's talk on the way. You know, let's just go and talk. Maybe, maybe he wants me to talk, you know. Maybe that's it. So I went and began to walk. I said, you know, I'm not going to wait. It's okay, and I'm just going to walk. And the person told me, are you sure? I said, yes, yes, it's okay. As I was walking... In that place, there are little bridges that connect the sidewalk to the pebbles of the beach. And they are about maybe six or seven feet tall. And they divide the sidewalk from the beach, um, from the pebbles. As I was walking, passing by a very famous corner there, I walked by and I felt something in my heart. I heard a voice in my head saying, look behind you. Look behind you. I looked behind, and I didn't see anything but darkness. It was very dark there, especially in the area of the bridge. So I looked, and I said, well, you know, maybe it's things. And I kept walking, and again, I heard something in my head telling me, look behind you again. When I looked again, there was an elderly man, maybe 85 years old, 
that had fallen from the bridge on his head and was stuck between the walls of the bridge and the sidewalk. It was something horrible. When I look and I squint to see what was happening, I heard him saying, please help me. I left everything that I had. I rushed to see him, put the mobile. It was covered in blood. Everything was covered in blood. Can you move the head, Grandpa? I can move it a little bit, he said. I took, what do you think came to my head at that moment? The big towel. Opened it back, took the big towel and put it in his back. Put the light there on that head. It is too early to describe what I saw there. In a few minutes, everything was covered in blood. Get up from there. Somebody was walking. Please call 911. We have a situation here. They call 911. In a few minutes, there were many people there, probably 75 people or 50 people. People were calling and talking and asking. This is one of the things that usually I do. And in that area, I also used to do. That area has a lot of elderly people. And what happens is that sometimes they just go out to walk. Sometimes they live alone. Um, sometimes they have no one. And so one of the things that I uh, was doing was volunteering with the, they call it like, police pastors or street pastors? Yes, yeah, so I was volunteering. You know, it was uh, um, uh, just volunteering. So one of my jobs, something that I decided to do, was to go around the neighborhood around 10, 10.30, just to see if there were elderly people in trouble. And, and then if they were, uh, then to call, you know, the ambulance. And like that, we rescue about seven or nine er elderly people, hanging from places, falling, you know, it was, and I met, I met a lot of people because then the children, they will come. Who, who was the one who found it? So there we were. That night, same thing happened. The ambulance came. They were saying, who, were you the doctor? They said, oh my, they said, oh, <laughs> you know, that was a, a temptation. I said, well, yeah, but I wasn't the doctor. I was, <laughs> I was just a helper there. Grandpa was taken. They did the maneuver. They put in the stretcher. They rushed him out there. And when he was coming out. He said, he was the one who found me. And we did this. I told him, Grandpa, you are going to be okay. Oh, my goodness. He began to cry, and I began to cry too. And then the, 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 the nurse, the paramedic said, um, do you want to take the towel? I said, no, no, keep it. Grandpa, keep that towel. And uh, whenever you see it, I want you to remember that the Lord loves you. Very much. Right there we were talking. I said, you know what? I'm, three trains were canceled so that I could meet you. And we cried, we hugged, and later on met the family because they came. Well, story short is that Grandpa, thanks to God, is okay. And all of that began because two things happened. Um, when the train was canceled, I was thinking maybe the Lord wants me to walk. We walk. And the other one was that as I was walking, I heard that feeling in my mind saying, look behind, and there he was. And this is why it is so important for us. I miss the voice of God many times. Don't think that I get it all the time, that my mobile is there. No, many times, and I have to say, oh, what did I do? Why did I say that? Just like all of us. But it is such a pleasure, such a joy when you hear God's voice, when you know that the, the Lord canceled three trains to save that man. So here he is saying, you will hear that voice. When you hear that prompt of the Holy Spirit, when you hear that, that fire burning in your bones, when you hear that impression from the Lord telling you, let's go this way, you will say, Lord, I don't understand well. I will walk humbly. If you don't want me to go that direction, please show me I am willing to come back regardless of what may happen, what people may say. I want to please you. I want to obey you. I want to glorify you. I want to listen to you. I want to walk with you. I want to do your will, Father. If you do this thing, the Lord will guide you because this is what the Bible has said. Call on me. And I will answer. There is not a single verse that says that if you call on the Lord, he will reject you or ignore you. Call on me and I will answer. He says that I, I will instruct you. I will teach you. And I will guide you. 
All of this is at your disposal if you come and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, I am willing. Lord, I want to hear you. He has, uh, again, I will repeat, uh, he will do for you more than you can ever ask or imagine. Not only he will ask, answer if you call, he can also answer before you call. I have never seen that. Have you ever called somebody before you're calling and they answer? You know, like you take the mobile and say, let me, oh, so tell me, you're going to call me? <laughs> but he says there that he will, this is talking about the willingness of the Lord to speak with you, to have a personal encounter, a personal relationship, a close friendship with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's there. He is calling. He is knocking. And it only takes two just to say, yes, Lord, I want you to guide me. I want to learn this language of yours. I want you to talk to me. Sometimes we don't listen like it has happened to me. And um, in his mercy and in his love, the Lord uses what we would like to call this morning the brick method. There was a young man, very accomplished, and um, he had... Um, <laughs> he was very successful, and he bought a Lamborghini. A Lamborghini he bought. Brand new, he was talking with some people and celebrating his accomplishments. You know, he got a, this big, amazing Lamborghini. Meanwhile, he was talking. Out of the blues came a brick from nowhere and broke the glass and scratched the car, and it was a big mess. He went crazy, and he said, who did this? So he looked at the Lamborghini, just brand new, scratch the object of the praise and admiration of his friends. And suddenly, he looks back, and across, he sees a little child standing, just smiling at him. You know, he looked Lamborghini broken, and he looks, and the child is there. Like this. He crosses the street. And he's very angry, and he said, what do you think you have done? Do you know how much that cost? Do you, you don't have money? To, to? And he began to insult the child. And the child said, sir, sir, I am so sorry. I didn't want to do that. This is the problem. My little brother is epileptic. He is having a seizure right now. He can die. I was calling you because you are the only one that will take us fast enough to the airport, uh, to, the, to the hospital. But I was calling on you and calling and calling and you didn't answer. And the only thing that I thought would get your attention was this brick. And he threw the brick and here he had the man. The man then realized what he had done, took the child and the child lived. This is a drastic measure that sometimes the Lord uses not, because, not out of hate or anger, but sometimes I have ignored his voice. And he says, what am I going to do in order to get the attention of that wonderful, cute, and handsome, right? Not talking about me in a person. <laughs> what am I going to do? And sometimes he uses the brick. The brick is like... I designed this brick for you so to get the idea. The brick is like that undesirable circumstance, unwanted circumstance that the Lord will send in order to get your attention. The brick will say, don't worry, Lord, I will help him understand. <laughs> have you received some bricks too? I have a big pile. I have so much, I can start building buildings. <laughs> I kept my own construction company. So if you do too, don't feel alone. We are together in this. And the good thing about it is that there is mercy and there is hope and there is love for us to start all over again. Amen. So I don't want anybody to get out of here thinking that it's over. I have heard the Lord. I have read. No. Today we can start and decide to say, Lord, I want to listen to your voice today. Amen. Is that Undes undesirable, unwanted, sometimes painful circumstances that will bring us back that the Lord doesn't want to use, but that will be the only way for us to listen. 
We don't have to go through that. We have already enough problems in our lives, isn't it? Amen? So we don't have to. The best thing to do, what will make our journey probably more smooth and straightforward is then to listen to him. But if you haven't, if you have refused the Lord, and if somebody actually even feel rebellious and anger, angry about it, it is normal. Probably you have gone through so much stuff, you don't even believe anymore. The Lord understands that too. And if you are hurting and you don't want to talk to him, just say it like that. Lord, I am hurting and I don't want to talk to you. But I'm here. Just say it. He understands. But he wants to speak to you. And the best decision ever would be to say, yes, Lord, speak that your servant is hearing. Before we receive another break. Yeah. Do you also have a construction company at home? Yes. The case of Saul of Tarsus. Remember Saul? was the same thing. He had a relationship with the church, but not with God. He knew scriptures, but not the word. He knew theology, but not theos. You know what theo is? Theo means God. This was Saul of Tarsus. He was a soldier of the system. He was a zealot of the doctrine. He was a keeper of the ritual. He was a slave of religion. He was angry, revengeful, arrogant, but he was disciplined. He was learned. He was self-righteous. He was intolerant, but he was sincere also. And he was remarkably stubborn. He was sincere, but being sincere is not enough. In fact, if you are sincere, um, and we are walking away from the Lord, because you are sincere, the Lord will do everything to reach you and to bring you to him. Not because you are sincere, oh, it's okay, he is sincere. No, no. I mean, I can sincerely, thinking that I'm doing the best for you, give you poison instead of orange juice, the effect will be the same. So the fact that you are sincere, you know, some people go out there, they mistreat, they divide churches, they hurt people. And I have heard this excuse. Yes, but he is sincere. But see, hell will be packed with sincere people. Oh my goodness, I thought I was doing right. No? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hell will be packed with sincere people. Being sincere is not enough. In fact, because you are sincere, then the Lord will do everything he can in order to reach you and bring you to him. Amen? Yes. That's what happened with him. And the Lord got a, had a meeting with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He said, we want to save this young man, don't we? Yes, we do. What are we going to do? I have talked to him. I spoke to him through the martyrs. I spoke to him through Stephen. I have spoken to him in dreams, impressions, through people, through uh, uh, advice, through counseling. I, have, I don't know what else to do. What do you think we're going to do, Dad? And God defies, well, I think that we will need to use Operation break. <gasps> Jesus said, are you sure, Father? What do you think, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit nodded. Only a break can stop him now. And we are going to, we have, do we love him or not? They say, yes, we do. With all our hearts, yes, we do. Do we love him more than anything else in this planet? Yes, we do. Then we will need to use the break. <laughs> it's the only way to save him. The Lord said. And one day, then Saul was full of rage and anger, breathing. It's like an imagery of a dragon. Amazing. Oh, Lord, this is so amazing there. When you go home, take a look at it. And um, that is found in uh, Acts 26, but also in Acts chapter 9. He is breathing anger and breathing hatred against the Christians. He's going there to kill them. And suddenly you know what happened. That light came in and said, Saul. A light took him down. Some people say from the horse, others from the camel. The Bible doesn't say what animal it was, but he was, he was on something. I would like to think that it was a camel, you know. They are going through the desert, and they are going through the desert. So there you go. They have them there. All the horses can do that too, no problem. Um, but there he goes, breathing like a dragon, hatred and anger. When that light shines in, 
if that camel kneels down, he flies. Whew, bang, head first. I remember that time when I was, ah, I don't know why did I do that. They, when we were children, we, we have these globes, uh, boxing globes. And, and they would give it to us, and then they would just put us there. They were, we were children just apparently boxing, and all the children were there too, and some adults. It wasn't nothing bad, you know, like abusive. It was just having fun. For the first time, you have globes you have seen it only in TV. So there you are. I remember that day, they used to call me the thunder. I mean, I don't want to boast about it, okay? But they knew that when thunder was on the rim, this fight would not last too long. You know, you will lose your money because thunder is here. We will give you five seconds to do that. I was called the thunder, not because I knocked the other guy fast, but because I went down fast. That's why it was the thunder. I remember that time, the only thing I saw was that globe coming towards my face. And then after seeing it coming towards my face, I saw the ground also coming towards my face. I heard the referee saying something like, that was all I understood. And so I decided to study theology. <laughs> I understood the message. Now here he is, and he's on the ground. And the Bible says that the Lord spoke to him. In what language was that? In Hebrew. Isn't that amazing? In his own language. He says that he is Hebrew of Hebrews. In his own language, he told him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul said, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. That conversation took place in Hebrew. Can you believe something like that? How would that sound? In, 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 how would that sound? If we were to read word by word in Hebrew, Saul, Saul. Why do you persecute me? It would sound more or less like Shaul, Shaul, Lamach Tiderfeni. That's how it would sound. I said, Lord, but who, 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 who are you? Who are you? In his own language, Shaul, Shaul, Lamach. You remember that, Lamach? There are two times Jesus said the same thing. Adonai, Elohim, Elohim, Lamach. Remember that? Sabak, Tani, why have you forsaken me? Now again, Shol, Shol, Lamach. Why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? He, in his own language, the Lord will talk to you and he will make sure you understand it's him that he's talking to you. He will talk in your own language. He will make sure. That's what we read in the word. And then he says there, it is a hard thing to kick against the goats. What is a goats? Do you know what is that? A goats is a stick, a goad, used by farmers. This is how it looked. There were other more simple than that, like a piece of bamboo, and at the end with something sharp. It was a, it, it was a long piece of wood, it could be. It's long stick, and at the end, it had a, it had a sharp, a pointed, it could be a knife, it could be something sharp to, how would I, would I say, to pinch the ox. And it was used to guide the livestock and the cattle. And the, now, when they had it, what happened is that there were some oxen that were very stubborn, very stubborn, and they would pinch them for them to walk, and they wouldn't walk. What they would do was what? They would kick the owner. The owner would try to, and then they would kick again. So whenever farmers went to the market to buy oxen and animals, where do you think they check in order to know if this was a stubborn animal? They would go behind, right, by the tail. And if the ox had a lot of, uh, how would you say, pinches, then they will know that this was a stubborn horse, uh, uh, sorry, um, a stubborn what we're talking? Ox, and they wouldn't buy it. 
the less it has, the less marked it has, the better it was. And Jesus is saying here to him, you are very stubborn, my son. And that is why you see that there, are, there is another uh, um, Bible version that says, so, so, why are you persecuting me? You are hurting yourself by hitting back like an ox kicking against the owner's stick. So why he say? He's saying, I want you to listen to me. We have been after you for a long time, and I have to do this even though I didn't want to. Many nights I've been trying to speak with you, but I haven't been able to reach you, so we have to use this brick. It has been a long time. God, that was not the first time God appeared to Saul, and this is the evidence that we have. Saul had been kicking for a long time. There is a man in India called Sanju Bhagat. He was the first man pregnant with a human being in his belly, Sanju Bhagat. He was very, very, very skinny. But his belly was as big as a woman that was about to give birth. They took him to the hospital. They checked what happened there. And behold, he had a human being right there. People were perplexed. But he didn't, he di it didn't matter what he ate. He didn't gain an inch. He didn't gain any weight. He looked he, um, um, malnourished. So they went to the hospital. And the doctor operated. When he put the hands in, he took them back and said, there is something there. I touched something alive there. They went in. When they opened, they brought back. You know what was in there? His twin brother. He was a twin. Probably you have heard <clears throat> about the case that sometimes... If mom is pregnant with twins, one of them becomes what they call a parasitic. A para, a paras and he goes into the twin that is better form, and he lived there. He didn't know that he has his twin brother for more than 30 years. Um, that is why he didn't get weight. He didn't gain weight. He, didn't, he looked malnourished. And now it was growing so big that it was pressing him and asphyxiating him. And that is why he went there to the surprise. They get rid of that. It was, it was a, not an, a nice thing to describe. It was not a human being per se. It was parts of human beings and other things. Something that was there alive that if they would cut, then they would perish. But it was not, it didn't have a form and they call it a parasite. And that is why he couldn't grow. That is why he couldn't live. That is why he was dying. And that is why no matter what he ate, no matter what he ate, it didn't serve him anything. He, did, he wasn't healthy. He didn't gain weight. The vitamins, nothing. So this is my question to you. What is it that is preventing you from growing and hearing God's voice? What parasite is eating you inside? What is it? What parasite is it? I need to take a look at myself and say, is it my arrogance? Is it my own religion? Is it hatred? Is it anger? Is it bitterness? Is it that I am refusing to let go? Is it that I want to be right all the time? Is it that? Is it that I'm abusive? <clears throat> <clears throat> is it people? Is it circumstances? Whatever it is, what is the parasite that is killing you and preventing you from hearing the Lord, from growing in Him? Whatever it is, He is ready and willing to operate this morning and to take that thing out of there so you may have a wonderful, fruitful, and healthy relationship with him in the name of Jesus. Do you want to do that? Do you want to allow the Lord to operate? Amen.
I would like to invite those that are at home also at this time to join us in prayer as we pray for the Lord to operate. We are willing to listen. Are we willing to listen to the Lord? Amen. We want to listen to the Lord, but maybe there is something inside us stronger and worse, something that you have no control over probably, but he can help you, save you, cleanse you, restore you in the name of Jesus. Do you want that this morning? We want that. I want the Lord to operate and to take out of there whatever is hurting, whatever is preventing me from hearing his voice. I want to be able to breathe. Do you? Yes. And to walk in his light in the name of Jesus. If somebody says yes, amen, let me see your hands and, and we will ask the Lord right now to say, Lord, operate in us. Take away whatever it is that is preventing and you that are at home, we're going to pray with you too at this time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you. We want to give you permission to operate and to take out of us whatever it is that is hurting our relationship with you. Give us the strength, Father. There are many things that although they are hurting us, we don't want to let go because we do not have the strength. But you have the strength. Give us the strength, Father. <clears throat> we come to you with our strengths. And some of us come to you actually even without the desire to change. But we come to you anyway. Please touch our hearts. Speak to us, Lord. And whatever is harming, deteriorating, and preventing, our, uh, preventing us from hearing you, from walking in your light... Take it away, Father. We give you permission. Give us the strength and the faith to follow you and to do your will. We thank you because you, your plans are good and because you will give us more than we can ever ask or imagine. Because your plans are not to harm us but to bless us, you have said, and we believe you. We thank you because you don't have bad intentions with us. We thank you because you don't want to hurt us. We thank you for that. And we thank you because you see what we cannot see. You hear what we cannot hear. And you know what we cannot know. What we do not know. And therefore, we trust you at this moment. Father, we are afraid. We are anxious. But we want to let you operate. We are sure that in your hands we will be safe, Father. We want to put ourselves and our families in your hands. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you in advance for everything that you will do. In the name of Jesus, amen, Father. Amen. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God disclosed with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other They're singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks.
talks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go Through the voice of woe His voice to me is real talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever joy we share as we tarry there none other As we tarry there, none other, none other, none other. My sister, may God bless you. May God bless you. What is it in you? What parasite is eating you up? What is it that is preventing you to be that child, that daughter of God? I would like you to turn with me to Psalm 30 verse 5. Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Wow. Weeping may remain at night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. You see, if you look at the text, there are two guests. One come at night, and one come in the morning. At night, when darkness befall us and troubles, we, we think that trouble have come to harm and, and to break us. But little do you know that this brick, this parasite, this trouble and trial is only a way to your Cana. This is the time for testimonies. We have a testimony of praise and thanksgiving. One of our sister who is here on camp the brother was sick in ICU, and God has prevailed. Amen. And the brother is coping and doing well. We are praying that total restoration will come. God is doing mighty things in our lives, and our sister Janita is here to share what the Lord has done for her in her life. Let us give a, a big amen to Janita.
Good morning, church. So, um, my life is a living testimony, and I'm grateful to say that God's name will always, always be in my mouth. I will be forever truly grateful for my life and what he's done in my life. In 2009, I was involved in a very, very serious car accident. And the, the, on the night, we were driving across a four-way. And to my left, I saw a black taxi coming. And he was coming at a very, very, very high speed. And I'm in the passenger seat at the front. So that taxi would have hit my side. And when I saw it, I screamed and the driver pressed. And because he pressed, the black taxi hit the back of the passenger seat on the left, the passenger side on the left. And the car was right off. The car spun around in the road for at least three times. And I remember looking out when the car stopped I remember seeing people running from all directions to the car. And they said to me, are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, I'm fine. Funny enough, I was fine. But people still insisted that I should go in the ambulance. But I didn't go in the ambulance. I was like, I'm fine. Maybe if it was now, fast forward to now, I would might be, maybe I would have stayed in the car and let them call the ambulance hoping to get a payout or something because we definitely were not in the wrong. But anyway, about three weeks after that, my mom, I didn't say anything to my family. And my mom said to me, you know what? I had a dream that you were in a car accident. And I didn't say anything to her because I didn't want her to worry. But the truth is I was in a very serious car accident. And she said she saw friends that were in the car with me. And she said she went over to the friends and said, how could you allow this to happen to her? Why did you do this? And she said, what? They said to her, what did we do? And she said, she's dead. And she said that she turned and she, she was arguing with them. And she said that they were so tall. When she turned around, her face was almost to their knees. She said when she, she had to step back and look at them, and she said they were tall, very, very tall, like lampposts. And she said, she looked up at them, and they said to her, no, Janita is fine. We've been looking after her since she was a baby. There were three angels. She described them as angels. And for me, I know the seriousness of that dream because I was in the accident and that could have been the ending of my life because the truth is I was a dance hall girl. I was a party girl with no purpose. I was that party girl. I loved partying. Partying was my whole life. I worked with the airline, but that wasn't my that wasn't what I wanted to do. I was a party animal. And do you know what? That day when she told me the dream, I realized that, you know what? I do have a purpose. I do have a purpose. And I want to walk in my purpose. And a few years after that, you know what? I did get baptized and I did give my life to Christ. And I did start to I did, my life started to elevate, and I went on to now become a teacher, an educator, who works with young people, who's very passionate about young people, because today I'm walking in my purpose. So I've crossed over from the dance hall to the classroom in Jesus' name. And I'm super grateful. I'm very, very, very grateful that God has given me a second chance to make a good impression and to motivate and inspire young people because that's who I'm passionate about. And I will walk in my purpose. I will so that I can glorify 
glorify God at all time. Can we sing um, This Is My Story? Just the end part, because I know we are pressed for time. This is my story, the chorus part of Blessed Assurance. Everybody, please help me sing. This, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. I'll be praising my Savior, my Savior all the day long. I'm about my father's business. Thank you. That is what the bread of Jesus does. He can turn your water to a wine. He can turn Paul, Saul to Paul, and Jacob to Israel. Your dancing to a superstar for Christ. Amen. It's time for our prayer session, and this is a sacred moment. So pray in your heart that the Spirit of God will take absolute charge of your life. The first prayer session is going to be, I'm going to call our pastor, Nyambani, to come and do a short prayer for our president and all our pastors and members who are traveling to GC. Remember, GC is a session time. Many major decisions are going to be made in the worldwide church, which is going to affect me and you. But we are praying that the Spirit of God will be upon them. And we are praying that God will carry our president and bring him safely home. who are traveling with you. Okay. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, it is a privilege to come before you this morning. We thank you for the goodness that you have in store for us. That when we seek, we'll find you. When we are lost, we are found. When we're wandering away from you, you say, come back home. We thank you for the privilege that you've given us as your children to seek your presence in our living as you are waiting to take us home. We know you are so gracious. You are faithful. You plan ahead you guide your children into righteousness. Behold, your children are moving for a special mission in the general conference a session. And we know you are able to guide your children through all the dangers, all the challenges that they face. We want to commit them onto your hands. Father, our president and the team are moving to the general conference session this coming week. We commit them into your hands in a special way. And we know you have got something to pass through them. That your name may be given glory in the planning and also the decisions which will be taken during the session. So Father, we are praying for traveling masses that your name may be given glory as you lead your children into higher heights of knowing you. As a church, we need your direction in these last days. May you help us that we may be true to the calling that you have called us and be ready to receive you when you come. So we commit every situation into your hand that your name may be given glory in every step of life. For this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
for our next prayer. Last night, as I bow with my wife and we were battling our hearts, crying to God, one thing that came on our minds is there are a group of people in the church they are normally forgotten of. They are people with special needs, family, disability. You have a child that have Down syndrome, and you come to the church, and no one will want to come to the church, or their behavior, you feel intimidated, and you are just don't want to come. Or you have some illness that really you feel ashamed. And no one prays for you. Maybe the same one doesn't reach them. We are going to pray for them. Do you know women that are crying for the fruit of the womb? God knows for how many years. The shame they go through and the pain, maybe in-laws are pushing you and pointing hands at you. You've been a mockery of the crowd. And they are crying like Hannah, God help me. It's our prayer that God is going to open wombs and hope. Are you one of those that are broken hearted and dying of pain and agony and you are crying and no one hears? Not even the sermon reaches you. Today is your breakthrough. Whether you are online or you are here, God hears. I'm going to call my wife. And Michaela to join me as we pray for all the requests in a brief, brief time. Michaela, we are going to pray for the special needs and women crying for the fruit of the womb. And maybe husbands and wives. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it's always a privilege to come to you, Lord, and come to your throne. And Because we know that you can handle our honesty, Lord God, and we know that you are great and that you are just waiting to do great and mighty things for us. So, Lord, first of all, as I intercede on behalf of the request, Lord, I'm asking that you would cleanse me and I'm asking, Lord, that you would hear this prayer. I pray, Father God, that you would be with the possibilities ministries of our church, Father God. You know, our sister Jackie or Tokpa, who has been leading that, Lord God, and the, the vision that you've placed on our heart to be able to make our church more inclusive. I'm praying, Father, that you would bless the ministry, that you would be with um, Asna, Father God, as well. You know, people and departments within our church who are really pushing to include those who are on the fringes. I pray for those mothers and those fathers, Lord, whose children may have, um, you know, Down syndrome or any other special need, Father God, and they maybe feel excluded. I'm asking that you would help us as, as the church members to find a way to support Father God. Um, those children who have got behavioral difficulties, Father God, who who can be disruptive sometimes, Father, I pray that you would teach us to know how to, to reach and help those parents to be able to manage their children as well. I also pray that you would give us love above all things, Father, that everything we do will be seasoned with your love and with your grace. I pray also, Lord, for, for those who are married, who are praying, Lord, for children. Father God, there's many, many a testimony of how you have come through for people who have put their requests before you. But Father, there are equally those who are here and have been praying to you for years, asking you, Father God, to open wombs. I pray, Father, that they would continue to trust you. I pray that they would trust your will in their lives. And I pray that you would come through for them in a way that when all is said and done, all they could do is give thanks to you. I pray, Father, that we would love you more than we love the, the, the gifts of you. And Father, I know that when we love you most, Father, that you would give us all the desires of our heart if we first delight ourselves in you. But I'm praying for those who want children, Father God, that you would open their wombs and that you would keep those marriages as well, Father, because in, that, in those years where you might not be giving, there can be strife that gets caused, Father God. And so I just pray that you would keep those marriages strong. I pray also, Father God, for those who are seeking you, for our husbands and for wives. I'm praying, Father God, that first of all, that you would be 
you would be there in our first love, that we would put our lives and our hearts first in your hands. I'm praying for young girls and young boys and everyone in between who's brokenhearted, who has loved the wrong or the right person, Father, but they still ended up with a broken heart. My prayer is that you would be the, the balm in Gilead that they need, Father, that you would soothe the broken heart, but also that you would help them not to throw in the towel, but to keep trusting you, knowing that you will provide in your time, Father God. I pray that we would trust you in all things and anything that I could have forgotten to pray for. I put it in your hands, Lord, and I'm asking you to move, but I pray more than anything that you would be our first love. And after that, that you would give us all that is according to your will in our lives. This is my prayer. You know my prayer. Amen. Our next prayer session, we are remembering some of our ministers. Some of them, their wives are not well. And they had to tend to the flock, the congregation, and also their wives. They are the carers. Let's pray for them. Many of us have put our request here and we are going to pray over them. And there are those that have unspoken or silent prayers. Remember our leaders. Our leaders. Our leaders of the church, the elders, the officers, the conference, the directors, and also the country of which we live. Remember the queen celebration today. We are going to pray for them. Then... We will follow with the request online. Let's pray. Oh, Jehovah, our God. Speak, 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 Jehovah, and move. And move. Holy Spirit, move. Father, we have no power. We have no power. We have no authority to bless, to heal. But in the name of Jesus, we stand in your praise. Oh, Father, wash us from our sins and cleanse us and do what you find best in our lives. Father, all of us have traveled this far. We want to be saved. There is a burden on our hearts. Please, no one encounter you and go the same. May we be transformed by the power of your spirit. I pray for our ministers and their spouses who are unwell. Please reach out to them and save them. We pray for our leaders that you give them wisdom, intelligence, that they will lead us to the land of Cana. Father, bless them with wisdom that their lives will be transformed. And when they are transformed, your children will be transformed. Pray for our queen, our prime ministers, our ministers, those that are caring and planning and providing for us in this nation so that we may not suffer. We pray that the church will have peace to worship in peace. That we, when we have peace, we will speak your word and many will come to know you. Father, many have come here because we want to be saved. Oh, Redeemer, Redeemer, Redeemer. Help us, help us individually. Families who have come seeking for their children, seeking for their loved ones. Oh, Jehovah, please lift up your hands and do one more thing. Seal us, seal us with your seal so that the world will know that we are yours forever and for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Children of God are the ones we cry, but we don't always cry. We, there's a time to cry. They say weeping may endure for the night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. I am reminded of the children of Israel. Uh, they were asked to sing a song, and they said, how can we sing a song while we are in Babylon, in a foreign land? We are being thrown into the lion's den. How do I sing a song when I'm struggling with cancer? When my child is having kidney failure, how do I sing a song? When Theo is in hospital and I don't know what to do, how can I sing a song? But I'm excited to say in Psalm 126, they said, When the Lord remembered the captives of Zion, we were like those who were dreaming. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you remember your children, the ones who have put their requests online and the ones who are here who have the requests that they cannot share with the public. And those requests, God, give them a song. Do 
a therapy that they will know that the doing could only be of the Lord. Father, we want to remember the 17-year-old who has kidney failure. Father God, step in powerfully. We want to remember those who are suffering from cancer. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Even today, you are able to go and administer healing and your children will be made well and whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, when we were hearing the message today, many were sending messages and their request was, Lord, may we hear your voice. May we hear your voice saying, this is the way walking in it. May God, may we be directed by your own eye in the name of Jesus. When the brick has come, Father, help us. Help us, help us to know you are still loving in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for all your children uh, whom we are praying for, that they will come to the knowledge of you. Many have put names, Father God. You are a reader of the names that have been put on the chat for the parents, the relatives who are crying out for their relatives to come to the knowledge of you, their sons, their daughters. They are saying, God, remember us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for all the unspoken requests that have been, the people have just saying, pray for my unspoken request. You who read the hearts of men, you who said before you call, I will answer. Oh God, show yourself strong, powerfully and mighty in Jesus name. Amen. 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 One of our sisters, Sister Tembi, the counseling director, is here working, but she's still in pain because the brother is unwell. Pray for her as we just finish praying for her. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your daughter could have chosen to stay by, but she's found it peaceful and graceful that my father has sent me. But she is breathing in her heart. For the brother that is sick, we commit him to you. You are the healer of our infirmities. Father, send the word, send the word, send the word. In, Matt, uh, in Luke chapter 8, verse 50, you told Jairus, do not be afraid, just believe. So, Sister Tembi, just believe. The Lord will visit you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray and I hope that you've all been blessed tomorrow morning, 6.30 online. But to those who are here on site, today we had a wonderful time of one-to-one -one prayer from 6 o'clock. So tomorrow again, meet with us, 6 o'clock. Then, I know we are nearly finishing but Sunday morning, to those who will remain here on campus, we will have a special time. You will not go without anointing from God. After just now, there are already people, intercessors who are on Zoom. They are ready and waiting for you to come with your requests and they will be ready to pray for you. We pray that you have a wonderful and productive day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.